Christmas Eve at Topmast Tickle by Norman Duncan. It was Labrador weather, sure enough, and winter weather too. A cold, windy time. There was nothing for it, however. The doctor and I must brave our way along. Myself, Davy Roth, a mite of a youngster in those days, and that good man and wise physician whom we called Doctor Luke on our grim coast. We love the man from Cape Chidley to the Straits. A thousand miles of bitter coast. Now his professional round. We loved him. Never such another for courage and tenderness as he. He had come a castaway from the wreck of the Saint Lawrence to our harbour, a moody, wretched fellow with the imprint of evil upon him. What evil he had done, I do not to this day know. So vivid was this suggestion, I recall, however, that I was moved one night to pray for him with all my might, and my prayer was addressed to my mother, then recently dead, in whose power, in her new estate, I had implicit faith. It seemed that she must understand, that she might procure his restoration. Dear mamma, I prayed, there's something wrong along of the doctor man who came the night you died. He've managed somehow to get wonderful sick. I'm not knowing what ails him or where he cotched it, but I sees it plain in his face, and 'tis a woeful sickness. Do you make haste to the throne o' God, please, mum, and tell him I've been asking you to have him cured. You'd want him well too, and you was here, and the Lord will surely listen to you and take your word for it. Oh, do you pray the Lord with all your might and main, dear mamma, to heal that man? It came about presently that the doctor made up his mind to stay on our coast, and I did not doubt that my mother had, in some way, accomplished his determination. That night, the night when the doctor told me that he was to stay, I rowed him to North Tickle and let the punt lie in the swell of the open sea, where it was very solemn and quiet. The sky was heavy with drifting masses of cloud, a flare with red and gold, and all the sunset colors from the black line of coast lying in the west, far into the east, where sea and sky were turning gray. Indeed, it was very still, very solemn, lying in the long crimson swell of the great deep, while the dusk came creeping over the sea. I do not wonder, the doctor muttered with a shudder, that the people who dwell here fear God. There was something familiar to me in that feeling, but for the moment I could not make it out. Zur, I said. His eyes ranged timidly over the somber waste, the vasty, splendid heavens, the coast, dark and unfeeling, the infinite, sullen sea, which ominously darkened as he looked. And he covered his face with his hands. No, he whispered, looking up. I do not wonder that you believe in God and fear Him. Then I knew that round about he felt the presence of an offended God, and fear Him. He repeated. I levelled my finger at him. You've been wicked, I said, knowing that my accusation was true. Yes, he answered. I have been wicked. I had been wicked too in my time and understood. Is you going to be good now? I am going to stay here, he replied, and I am going to heal the people and try to be good. I'll die to see it! I cried. Ecod, my friend, old skipper Tommy Lovejoy commented when the news was imparted to him. You'll never tell me the doctor managed to stay in our harbor. Well, well, and all because the Saint Lawrence was wrecked, and because your mother died the night he come ashore, and because he might have saved her had he been here in time enough. Ecod says the Lord. Now that I got that doctor man there, I'll just put it in his mind to stay and do a day's work or two for me. I'm sure he meant it. I'm sure he meant to do just that. I'm sure it was all done a purpose. We thinks he's hard and a bit free and careless. It Cod, there's times when we thinks he fair bungles his job. He kills us and he cripples us and he starves us and he hurts our hearts. And then Davy, we says he's a dunderhead at running the world, which says we we could run a sight better if we was able to make one. But the Lord Davy does his day's work in a seamanlike way, using no more crooked backs and empty stomachs and children's tears and broken hearts than he can help. 'Tis little we knows about what he's up to. 
all of which was characteristic of Skipper Tommy. And the doctor was presently cured. There is virtue for the city bred, I fancy, in the clean salt air and simple living of our coast, and surely for every one, everywhere, a tonic in the performance of good deeds. Hard practice in fair and foul weather worked a vast change in the doctor. Toil and fresh air are eminent physicians. The wonder of salty wind and the hand-to-hand -hand conflict with the northern sea. They gave him health, a clear-eyed, brown, deep-breathed sort of health, and restored a strength, broad-shouldered and lithe and playful, that was his natural heritage. With this new power came joyous courage, indomitability of purpose, a restless activity of body and mind. He was now, in manly qualities, the man the good God designed, strong and bonny and tender-hearted, betraying no weakness in the duties of the day. And he went about with hearty words on the tip of his tongue and a laugh in his grey eyes. The children ran out of the cottages to greet him as he passed by, and a multitude of surly, ill-conditioned dogs, which yielded the road to no one else, accepted him as a distinguished intimate but to the story it was labrador weather as i have said white weather and the day before christmas the doctor and i must get along there was nothing for it we must spend christmas at home the wind must not deny us nor the cold nor the driving snow returning afoot from the bedside of long john wise at run by guess and from many a bedside and wretched hearth by the way the doctor and i strapped our packs aback and heartily set out from the hudson's bay company's post at bread and water bay in the dawn of the day before christmas being then three weeks gone from our harbour and thinking to reach it next day we were to chance hospitality for the night, and this must be, they told us, at the cottage of a man of the name of Jonas Jutt, which is at Topmast Tickle. There was a lusty old wind scampering down the coast, with many a sportive whirl and whoop, flinging the snow about in vast delight, a big rollicking winter's wind, blowing straight out of the north at the pitch of half a gale. With this abeam we made brave progress, but yet t'was late at night when we floundered down the gully called Long and Deep, where the drifts were overhead, and each must rescue the other from sudden misfortune, a warm glimmer of light in Jonas Jutt's kitchen window to guide and hearken us. The doctor beat on the door with his fist. Open, he cried. Open. There was no response. Open the doctor shouted still furiously knocking not a whisper not a creak was elicited from within are you dead are you deaf the doctor cried good lord will you never open this door so gruff was the voice so big and commanding and so sudden was the outcry and so late was the night and wild the wind and far away the little cottage that the three little juts who then sat expectant at the kitchen fire must all at once have huddled close i fancy that sammy blinked no longer at the crack in the stove but slipped from his chair and limped to his sister whose hand he clutched i am sure of it I am sure that little Sammy Jutt slipped from his chair in a fright, that he limped across the floor to Martha Jutt, and that he caught hold of her hand, and that he stared at the door with his eyes popping out while the furious knocking went on and the big voice commanding entrance. That was little Sammy Jutt's way, to limp to his sister and catch hold of her hand. "'We'll freeze, I tell you,' shouted the doctor. "'Open the—' Ah thank you in a mollified way as skipper jonas jutt opened the door and then most engagingly may we come in and welcome sir said the hearty jonas whoever you be tis getting to be a wild night thank you yes yes a wild night glad to catch sight of your light from the top of the hill we'll leave the rackets here straight ahead thank you i see the glow of a fire we entered hello cried the doctor stopping short "'What's this? Kids? Good! Three of them! Ah! How are you?' The manner of asking the question was most indignant, not to say threatening, and a gasp and heavy frown accompanied it. By this I knew that the doctor was about to make sport for Martha and Jimmy and Sammy Jutt, as their names turned out to be, 
which often he did for children by pretending to be in a great rage, and invariably they found it delicious entertainment, for, however fiercely he blustered, his eyes twinkled most merrily all the time, so that one was irresistibly moved to chuckle with delight at the sight of them, no matter how suddenly or how terribly he drew down his brows. "'I like kids,' said he, with a smack of the lips. "'I eat em gurgles of delight escaped from the little juts and each turned to the other the eyes of all dancing and how are you the doctor demanded his fierce little glance was indubitably directed at little sammy as though god save us the lad had no right to be anything but well and ought to be and should be birched on the instant if he had the temerity to admit the smallest ache or pain from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet but Sammy looked frankly into the flashing eyes, grinned, chuckled audibly, and lisped that he was better. Better? the doctor exploded. Ither, said Sammy. The doctor searched Sammy's white face and scrawny body, as though for evidence to the contrary. Is that the best you can do? he demanded. Better, eh? Huh? Why aren't you well? Ah, huh? aren't you ashamed of yourself? Sammy was not at all ashamed of himself, and he was delighted with the big stranger. Nah, the doctor growled, again looking Sammy over from head to foot. I'll attend to you. Thereupon Skipper Jonas took us to the shed, where we laid off our packs and were brushed clean of snow, and by that time Matilda Jutt, the mother of Martha and Jimmy and Sammy, had spread the table with the best she had little enough god knows being but bread and tea and was smiling beyond presently there was nothing left of the bread and tea and then we drew up to the fire where the little jutt still sat regarding us with great interest and i observed that martha jutt held a letter in her hand whereupon i divined precisely what our arrival had interrupted for i was labrador born and knew well enough what went on in the kitchens of our land of a christmas eve and now my girl said the doctor was what by this extraordinary question delivered as it was in a manner that called imperatively for an answer martha judd was quite nonplussed as the doctor had intended she should be what's what repeated the doctor quite startled martha lifted the letter from her lap he's not coming sir she gasped for lack of something better you're disappointed i see said the doctor so he's not coming no sir not this year well, that's too bad but you mustn't mind it you know not for an instant what's the matter with him he've broke his leg sir what cried the doctor restored of a sudden to his natural manner poor fellow how did he come to do that catch him one of the wild deer sir catching a deer the doctor exclaimed a most extraordinary thing he was a fool to try it how long ago sure can't be more than half an hour for he've the doctor jumped up where is he he demanded with professional eagerness it can't be far davy i must get to him at once i must attend to that leg where is he north pole sir whispered sammy oh cried the doctor and he sat down again and pursed his lips and winked at sammy in a way most peculiar i see ay sir jimmy rattled eagerly we're fair disappointed that he's not ha the doctor interrupted i see hm well now and having thus incoherently exclaimed for a little the light in his eyes growing merrier all the time he most unaccountably worked himself into a great rage whereby i knew that the little juts were in some way to be mightily amused the lazy rascal he shouted, jumping out of his chair, and beginning to stamp the room, frowning terribly. The fat, idle, blundering dunderhead! Did they send you that message? Did they, now? Tell me, did they? Give me that letter. He snatched the letter from Martha's lap. Sammy, he demanded, where did this letter come from? North Pole, sir. Jonas Jutt blushed, and Matilda threw her apron over her head to hide her confusion. "'And how did it come?' "'Out of the stove, sir.' The doctor opened the letter and paused to slap it angrily from time to time as he read it. "'North Pole, dear Martha, 
few lines to let you know on account of having broken me leg cotchin the deer i'm sorry i'm in a state of health not being able so as to be out in heavy weather hopin you is all well as it leaves me yours respectful sandy claus fish was poor and it would not be much this year's anyways tell little sammy ha cried the doctor as he crushed the letter to a little ball and flung it under the table ha that's the kind of thing that happens when one's away from home there you have it discipline gone to the dogs system gone to the dogs everything gone to the dogs now what do you think of that he scowled and gritted his teeth and puffed and said ha in a fashion so threatening that one must needs have fled the room had there not been a curiously reassuring twinkle in his eyes what do you think of that he repeated fiercely at last a countermanded order i'll attend to him he burst out i'll fix that fellow the lazy dunderhead i'll soon fix him give me pen and ink where's the paper never mind i've got some in my pack one moment and i'll he rushed to the shed to the great surprise and alarm of the little juts and loudly called back for a candle which skipper jonas carried to him and when he had been gone a long time he returned with a letter in his hand still ejaculating in a great rage see that said he to the three little juts well that's for santa claus's clerk that'll fix him that'll blister the stupid fellow please sir whispered martha jutt well snapped the doctor stopping short in a rush to the stove please sir said martha taking courage and laying a timid hand on his arm sure i don't know what tis all about i don't know what blunder he made but i'm thinking sir you'll be sorry if you acts in haste tis wise to count a hundred don't be too hard on him sir tis like the blunder may be mended tis like he'll do better next time don't be hard hard on him the doctor interrupted hard on him hard on that i sir she pleaded looking fearlessly up won't you count a hundred count it said he grimly martha counted i observed that the numbers fell slower and yet more slowly from her lips until and she was keenly on the watch a gentler look overspread the doctor's face and then she rattled them off as though she feared he might change his mind once more and a hundred she concluded breathless well the doctor drawled rubbing his nose i'll modify it whereupon martha smiled just to oblige you whereupon she blushed so he scratched a deal of the letter out then he sealed it strode to the stove opened the door flung the letter into the flames slammed the door and turned with a wondrously sweet smile to the amazed little juts there he sighed i think that will do the trick we'll soon know at any rate we waited all very still all with eyes wide open all gazing fixedly at the door of the stove then all at once and in the very deepest of the silence the doctor uttered a startling ha leaped from his chair with such violence that he overturned it awkwardly upset jimmy jutt's stool and sent the lad tumbling head over heels for which he did not stop to apologize and there was great confusion in the midst of which the doctor jerked the stove door open thrust in his arm and snatched a blazing letter straight from the flames all before jimmy and martha and sammy jutt had time to recover from the daze into which the sudden uproar had thrown them there cried the doctor when he had managed to extinguish the blaze we'll just see what's in this better news i'll warrant you may be sure that the little juts were blinking amazement there could be no doubt about the authenticity of that communication and the doctor seemed to know it for he calmly tore the envelope open glanced the contents over and turned to martha the broadest of grins wrinkling his face martha jutt said he will you please be good enough to read that and martha read north pole december twenty four ten eighteen p m to captain blizzard jonah jutt's cottage topmost tickle labrador coast respected sir regret erroneous report mistake of a clerk in the bureau of information santa claus got away at nine thirty six wind blowing due south strong and fresh snow chief clerk 
then there was a great outburst of glee it was the doctor who raised the first cheer three times three and a tiger and what a tiger it was what with the treble of sammy which was of the thinnest description and the treble of martha which was full and sure and the treble of jimmy which dangerously bordered on a cracked bass and what with matilda's cackle and skipper jonas's croak and my own hoorays and the doctor's guttural uproar which might have been mistaken for a very double bass what with all this as you may be sure the shout of the wind was nowhere then we joined hands it was the doctor who began it by catching martha and matilda and danced the table round shaking our feet and tossing our arms the glee ever more uproarious danced until we were breathless every one save little sammy who was not asked to join the gamble but sat still in his chair and seemed to expect no invitation wind blowing due south strong and fresh gasped jimmy when at last we sat down He'll be down in a hurry, with they swilt dear. My, but he'll just whiz in this gale. But tis sad, tis too late to get word to un, said Martha, the smile gone from her face. Sad, is it? cried the doctor. Sad? What's the word you want to send? Tis something for Sammy, sir. Sammy gave Martha a quick dig in the ribs. And Mama, he lisped reproachfully. Ay, sir, we're wantin it bad, and does you think us could get word to him for Sammy, sir? A mamma, Sammy insisted. We can try at any rate, the doctor answered doubtfully. Maybe we can catch him on the way down. Where's that pin? Here we are. Now, he scribbled rapidly, folded the letter in great haste, and dispatched it to Santa Claus's clerk by the simple process of throwing it in the fire as before he went to his pack in the shed taking the candle with him the errand appeared to be really most trivial and stayed so long that the little juts who now loved him very much as i could see wished that the need would not rise again but all in good time he returned and sat to watch for the reply intent as any of them and presently he snatched the stove door open creating great confusion in the act as before and before the little juts could recover from the sudden surprise he held up a smoking letter then he read aloud try hamilton inlet touches there ten forty eight time of arrival of top mystical uncertain no use waiting up snow clerk by jove exclaimed the doctor that's jolly touches hamilton inlet at ten forty eight he consulted his watch it's now ten forty three and a half We've just four and a half minutes. I'll get a message off at once. Where's the confounded pin? Ah, here we are. Now, what is it you want for Sammy and Mamma? The three little juts were suddenly thrown into a fearful state of excitement. They tried to talk all at once, but not one of them could frame a coherent sentence. It was most distressful to see. The exterminator, Martha managed to jerk out at last. Oh, I cried Jimmy Jutt. Quick, sir, write him down. Pine's prompt pain exterminator warranted to cure. Please, sir, make haste. The doctor stared at Jimmy. Oh, sir, groaned Martha, don't be staring like that. Right, sir, twas all in the paper the prospector left last summer. Pine's prompt pain exterminator cures boils, rheumatism, pains in the back and chest, sore throat, and all they things, and warts on the hands by a simple application with brown paper. We wants it for the rheumatiz, sir. Oh, sir, none genuine without the label jimmy put in in an excited rattle money refunded if no cure get a bottle with the label the doctor laughed laughed aloud and laughed again by jove he roared you'll get it it's odd but uh, ha, 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 by jove he has it in stock the laughter and repeated assurance seemed vastly to encourage jimmy and martha the doctor wrote like mad while he talked but not little sammy all that he lisped all that he shouted all that he screamed had gone unheeded as though unable to put up with the neglect any longer he limped over the floor to martha and tugged her sleeve and pulled at jimmy's coat-tail and jogged the doctor's arm until at last he attracted a measure of attention 
notwithstanding his mother's protest notwithstanding her giggles and waving hands notwithstanding that she blushed as red as ink until as i perceived her freckles were all lost to sight notwithstanding that she threw her apron over her head and rushed headlong from the room to the imminent danger of the doorpost little sammy insisted that his mother's gift should be named in the letter of request quick cried the doctor what is it we've but half a minute left sammy began to stutter make haste by it cried jimmy one bottle of the magic egyptian beautifier said sammy quite distinctly for the first time in his life the doctor looked blank but he doggedly nodded his head nevertheless and wrote it down and off went the letter at precisely ten forty seven forty five as the doctor said later when the excitement had all subsided and we sat dreaming in the warmth and glow the doctor took little sammy in his lap and told him he was a very good boy and looked deep in his eyes and stroked his hair and at last very tenderly bared his knee sammy flinched at that and he said ouch once and screwed up his face when the doctor his gruffness all gone his eyes gentle and sad his hand as light as a mother's worked the joint and felt the knee-cap and socket with the tips of his fingers and is this the room it is the prompt exterminator is to cure sammy he asked is sir and is that where it hurts you right on the point of the bone there is there and was there no fall on the rock at all ah there was a fall and the bruise was just there where it hurts so much and it's very hard to bear isn't it sammy shook his head no but it hurts a great deal sometimes does it not that's too bad that's very sad indeed but perhaps perhaps sammy i can cure it for you if you are brave and are you brave no oh i think you are and you'll try to be at any rate won't you of course that's a good boy and so with his sharp little knives the doctor cured sammy jutt's knee while the lad lay white and still on the kitchen table and twas not hard to do but had not the doctor chanced that way sammy jutt would have been a cripple all his life dr zur said matilda jutt when the children were put to bed with martha to watch by sammy who was still very sick is you really got a bottle of pines pomped the doctor laughed an empty bottle said he i picked it up at poverty cove thought it might come useful i'll put sammy's medicine in that they'll not know the difference and you'll treat the knee with it as i've told you that's all we must turn in at once for we must be gone before the children wake in the morning oh i sir and she began but hesitated much embarrassed well the doctor asked with a smile would you mind putting some queer-looking stuff on one of they bottles of yours not in the least in surprise and writing something on a bit of paper she went on pulling at her apron and looking down and gluing it to the bottle not at all but what shall i write she flushed magic egyptian beautifier sir she answered for i'm thinking twould please little sammy to think that sandy claus left something for me too if you think that the three little juts found nothing but bottles of medicine in their stockings when they got downstairs on christmas morning you are very much mistaken indeed there was much more than that a great deal more than that i will not tell you what it was for you might sniff and say huh that's little enough but there was more than medicine no man rich man poor man beggar man thief doctor lawyer nor merchant chief ever yet left a hudson's bay company's post stared in the face by the chance of having to seek hospitality of a christmas eve no right-feeling man i say ever yet left a hudson's bay company's post under such circumstances without putting something more than medicine in his pack i chanced to know at any rate that upon this occasion dr luke did not and i know too you may be interested to learn it that as we floundered through the deep snow homeward bound soon after dawn the next day he was glad enough that he hadn't 
no merry shouts came over the white miles from the cottage of jonas jutt though i am sure that they rang there most heartily but the doctor did not care he shouted merrily enough for himself for he was very happy and that's the way you'd feel too if you spent your days hunting good deeds to do End of Christmas.